uh, OneNote, Meetings, let me share my screen. So this is this was from last week, and we pushed the admin theme demo to today. Um, oh, this I didn't do. I will. Um, new meeting page. Five twenty four twenty fifteen. Status. I'm not sure there has been much apart from the triage and pull request last week, let's see, um, GitHub, first I will do that, issues, milestones, yes, new milestone, one, ten, two, just for triage, oops, oops, let's keep consistent, save okay good um, status 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 looking at the people in the meeting room just to see if I'm missing something or any announcement I don't think so so this is orchard 2 and orchard Okay, um, so Dev seven days ago, so we talked about it, Daniel, last week, what you did fixing the jQuery thing. Uh, by the way, I saw this morning that jQuery 3 was um, RC. Um, removing long often backup module manifest file from Orchard multi tenancy. Backup module manifest file. Um, I see. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, on dev, change prefix into suffix. Uh, <laughs> that's a bold change. I also wondered many times why it was called prefix and not because it's not a prefix, but until I realized why it was called prefix and not suffix because it's all relative from <laughs> where you stand. If you're on the right, it's actually a prefix. So from the slug perspective, it's the prefix. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe it would be better if it was called URL path prefix, then it would be... I don't know, yeah, but... So At least then it would be unambiguous, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not sure it's worth touching right now, maybe in order yes. to... Do. At the same time, look, it's just UI, okay? It's just change the UI things. Yeah, but it then is yeah, much now with the... Yeah. It never bothered anyone. Just well, it bothered me at some point because I was wondering why. Uh, but then I realized it's just a perspective. It's probably also less intuitive to have the actual property name differ from the UI. Yeah, so. no, no, now it's less intuitive. That, that's the discrepancy now. Yeah. Because which one is right? We are sure to have it wrong because we have two things. If yeah. only one, we have one chance out of two to be right. Exactly. Now we are we are wrong. Whatever we said. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, we might want to revert that. Also because it's not yeah, it doesn't have a big impact. At least maybe no impact at all. But just just for consistency, if we want to change it in Orchard two, we'll change it. So far, I haven't changed it. I was like, yeah, who cares? Um, implement second missing SAS pipeline. So this is Matthew. This is, so this one is interesting. 
uh, story was something didn't work in Orchard 2 related to uh, the asset pipeline and the issue was that the um, minified files were not processed with SCSS so I added it into Orchard 2 and when we checked in Orchard 1 this was the opposite. They were not processed for the SCSS, were not processed for the non minified one. So Matthew added that as a PR on Orchard one. So we, we were, there was a, the opposite issue on both Orchard one and Orchard two. So now this is fixed. Um, then, um, fixed pass to Orchard one map. Yeah, there is a case sensitive issue here in the in the folder name which and then I assume someone is using Orchard on Linux because the issue was found. Um, 110x or importing media yeah there is a, there was a JavaScript issue we noticed it before 1101 but we didn't fix it and it could show up some pop-ups um, if you had uh, the debugger enabled for JavaScript. So now this is fixed. Um, it was not a functional issue, it was just actually you don't need that anymore because Benedict fixed something else which prevents that to be called but that's fine. Uh, fixed missing translations again from Matthew, right? Um, yep some two files were missing translations here and there that's good and deleted and 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 they removed the reference to jobs queue which is not necessary so that's good um, yep yeah, it might be a feature redependency but apparently not uh, on the DLL itself. Um, what did I miss? Questions? Okay, nothing interesting. No questions for the status? Um, so we did pull request triage and issue triage last week um, nothing important, we commented on all the PRs nothing special um, no. ok, demos today um, I can have some demos um, so demos We'll have Sipke when he joins. Um, I can do some more chat too. Uh, topics. What's the topic of the week after the one from last week? Oh, it was two weeks, two weeks ago we had a topic of the week. Um, topics, topics, topics. We can take a look at documentation uh, to see if there has been some progress. Um, website. Um, what else? Gallery. Um, okay, documentation. So just a reminder for those who are not there last week, um, docs.orchardproject.net is live. Um, the, oh, something you want to look at, Daniel, if you haven't yet, is assets documentation from Matthew. I um, I looked through it and I gave Matthew some feedback on it as well. Okay. I like the new uh, documentation site, by the way. That was a nice surprise. Antoine made it. Looks Very beautiful. Nice. Um, so assets documentation is here. My only feedback on this one would be like a simple introduction about mm. what it does and how it works, maybe without having to read everything. I suggested that he also document the watch property because uh, it's okay. sort of central. So I think he's going to add that. Okay. There might be also some hidden features. I remember one day I looked for maps. Yes, like this one. I wanted to not generate them and I found it was a hidden feature that you could define something like this. There might be some other hidden features if you look at the code. I don't know. 
Yeah, I looked through it, and uh, as far as I know, he documented everything except the watch feature. Okay. So that's good. Um, <coughs> what is the recommendation? That's it. Yeah, feel free to contribute. I see that Antoine is fixing um, issues as they are reported. So that's good. Good job, Antoine and Matthew. Website. We haven't seen any blog post from Steve for the past week, I think. So I will ping him. I like his blog post, or maybe he's working on the site itself. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. As a reminder, uh, Steve Taylor. I will put Orchard because there might be so many Steve Taylors. Um, yes, has been writing a series of posts about rewriting the new website, um, like five posts, yes. And uh, so I assume the next step is to actually start writing it. Oh, people have been commenting. We also have blah, blah, blah. The... It's ugly. What is ugly? Tryout.net, I said that. Yes. Yes, I remember it because it's ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, but as soon as you have Daniel's new uh, theme, it will be beautiful. Daniel, I assume you didn't work on that. You had other issues to take care of. Yeah, but that's that's on the top of my list to take care of now that I'm recovered. So, good. Okay, so that's good. Um, so that's about the website. Uh, Steve is never here, so nope. Um, gallery. So last uh, week during triage. Antoine mentioned some issues with the gallery. Um, well, some issues, some improvement suggestions. Um, where is that? GitHub. It's Orchard Gallery. I think you sent me an email. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Did you send me an email, Antoine? Is he here? Yes. Yes, I did. I didn't respond right no not yet okay and okay <laughs> what was the question sorry i wanted uh, the theme uh, the oh. strategy used by the gallery it should not yeah okay it should not be different that's weird okay uh i guess there are some views uh, specific to the gallery okay then i will uh, if that's the case i won't send it to you i will just update the one from the the okay. repository yeah Ping me again. If I don't answer in the 24 hours, just send me another email. It's just because I forgot, not that I don't want to do it. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, so Antoine is trying to fix the missing links, filters, sort, orders, and things like that, which is not hard, but it has to be done by someone. So he's doing that. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, this one is weird because this, this worked for me. Okay, because I confirmed and I wasn't the only one. Okay, good. Questions about documentation, website, gallery? One question. I was uh, trying to catch up on some community meeting videos, um, mm -hmm. but I couldn't find them for a, a while back. Um, are those... My mistake, actually. Uh, we have, uh, so we have the recording for all of them, but I didn't have time for, for cross-processing. Um, I tried to process the the ones that we had recorded as soon as possible. Cool, thanks. That's why I join, so I don't have to catch up with the previous ones. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's so easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, demos will wait for uh, Sipke. I will show you what the progress on Orchard 2. So you've seen, it's obvious, there are not many commits from myself, apart from merging branches, okay, because I'm trying to progress on Orchard 2. Um, so status on Orchard 2, just because it's important also. Um, I switch repositories, um, Orchard. This is my local name. I haven't changed it. I should, but who cares? Um, there will be a project or CS project and yes at some point. yeah 
Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> it's a sad story. It, it's yes. not. It's so good. I love it. The game is built for the win. Um, so remember, this was so Jasmine pushed some support for Linux. He also pushed some support for Docker images. Um, let me because I haven't done a status on Archer two for a long time. Just quickly, what um, what has changed? So fixing RC two, agreeing. So Alexander Bosharov is. Um, um, pushing a lot of pull requests for um, keeping up to date with the RC2 versions and port. Great job. Uh, Jasmine worked on SQLite. Um, he worked on SQLite and uh, now yes, SQLite is supported is yes, in Yes SQL. Oh, and in, in Orchard also. Let me see. Did I try it? No, I haven't tried it with Orchard, but it's supported in SQL, so it should work with Orchard. The idea with SQLite, the limitation we have is that we need two um, files for SQLite. As a reminder, in Orchard 2, we separate the indexing from the content item documents. Um, they can be both stored in different um, persistent mechanisms, but if you want to use both in SQL, with SQL Server, it's very easy. There is just another table containing all the documents. With SQLite, we'll need two databases, one for the documents and one for the index. At the same time, you can have one SQLite for the index and blob storage for the documents. So that kind of makes sense. But it's a technical limitation for SQLite only. Uh, so we should have a SQLite working uh, soon with Orchard 2. As, as soon as someone wants to integrate that in the setup process, that, that should work. Um, Jean Thierry is working a lot also on Orchard 2 for dynamic compilation, trying to make it work correctly in every scenario. The issues we have with dynamic compilations are multiple. Uh, first, it's not there is no nothing like a build manager like in Orchard 1 or in ASP.NET. Um, MVC. Uh, there is no build, build, uh, build manager, so what Gentry is currently doing, he copy pasted some of the code from .NET build to integrate it in Orchard as a separate uh, service, so we can build on demand some projects, and he's building it on demand. The second issue is that Visual Studio and the CLI don't look for the binaries in the same folder. Visual Studio will build everything in a folder called artifacts at the root of the project, for all the projects, um, well, at the root of the solution for all the projects. So there will be an artifacts folder. Let me show you. Uh, so here is my solution folder. And you see this folder is created by Visual Studio to put all the binaries um, for all the projects. OK. Uh, but if we build from the command line, um, the binaries are created in each modules or projects folder. Okay, So when Orchard loads and we try to load an assembly dynamically, we need to check in different places if where the binary can be. And also, if we want to support dynamic compilation, um, it will build it in the bin. But yes, there are issues like this. We need to, to take care of that. Uh, Shantia is working on that. But yeah, it kind of works. Um, he's also working on invalidating all the um, the, the binary is, is if a file has changed so that we can rebuild, even if the binary is there, we detect that the binary is not up to date and we need to rebuild it. So some um, work going on on that. Um, and yes, this is a Visual Studio. And then there is VS Code, which works also differently. Well, VS Code is using the command line. So that's, that's the issue. So the VS Code will use the slash bin folders in every module. So we have lots of discrepancies here. Uh, this is a branch that I worked on to support uh, content type definition shapes. I will show you the end uh, result, which is quite nice, I think. It took me a long time, like two full weeks, but now it's beautiful. Um, I will show you. I also, by the way, added some a text field just to ensure that all the field works and we have settings working. Um, what do we have here? Uh, this is the CSS bug. Um, I fixed the uh, unsafe URL support, which actually was because of the CSS, I think. Oh no, maybe not. Um, 
prefix for shapes in the content type definition and also the display drivers. And that works good. Uh, this one also interesting, um, shape proxy generation. So let me show you how it looks like. So the main, um, and I will show you this after. So the main thing I worked on in the last two weeks on this project was, 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 was um, this thing, content types. So content types management, meaning creating, editing types, parts, adding fields, editing settings, um, editing these cust custom content types. So this is content types. So what it contains is the controllers to create and so on. What we have in content type abstractions is the set of um, services and uh, model classes that are needed if you want to um, augment the content types like adding parts, adding types, or um, defining the drivers for the type settings, the part settings, the field settings, field editors, things like that. This way you don't need the module itself, you can just use this library. This is not a module, this is just a library that is used by content types and by any other module that needs to, um, to add uh, custom settings, for instance. Um, yeah. So this way you can just reference this one and you don't need to check that the feature is enabled. Yeah, you just provide it in case the feature is enabled because just the, this feature will use the abstraction from this one as a client and you are the provider for this uh, feature. Um, so what happens, let me show you an example. Uh, I worked on the, well, let's run something actually. Let's run something, yeah, after. Um, so the list module for instance, the list module has a model called list part. Okay, this one you know. This is just a content part. Okay, this is just a marker content part actually. And what we have, this is why I made this uh, the, the work on content types, is a list part settings. A list part settings just knows about the contained content type. So, um, example, you want to create a blog. Now, to create a blog, you, you will run the blog recipe, which will create a content type call, uh, called um, blog, a content type called blog post, and the blog will have a list part attached. Okay, And because it's a list part, it will also have a list part setting, a setting called contain content type, which will be blog post. So a blog is a list of blog post. So we need to um, show these settings in the UI for the content type definition of blog for the list part. Okay, so what you do then you create this class representing your settings, but you don't need to because settings are still a, a JSON object or a dynamic object um, in the in database, but it's better to, to be based on a view model like this. Um, and there is also an extension class to just say dot contain content types with the value and it will actually set the string contain content type with the string contain content type, okay? This is a, a command pattern we have in Orchard, so this is cool. In terms of um, development, we just call this extension method. Uh, so this is the model, a list part and list part setting. Now the drivers, um, there is the list part driver which is, here it's just a content handler, okay? The driver is just, just a content handler with, for instance, get content data metadata. In this case, it's just to override the admin view. We don't care. The list part display driver is to do the um, displaying, editing, and updating, like in Orchard 1. Nothing special here. So, yep. so uh, basically you, uh, you, you made drivers and handlers into one driver? Yeah, I, I, the issue is just historical, I, we, we can change totally the name. Um, this thing contains all the, the events, okay? But no displaying. So I, actually I split the content management events, the handlers. It's still a high content handler, so this base class should be renamed. It should be called content part handler probably, okay? It's the high content handler, but the high content handler doesn't contain the display, update, and uh, edit. This is another interface, which is which is if I go up display driver. 
Okay. So, so, so like handlers and drivers are more or less on the same level now, yep. instead of drivers being a subset yep. of handlers, so to say. Yep. Huh? Yes. To separate the concern, it's like like now the driver is really like a controller. You just use it for rendering stuff. I see. Okay. That's cool. Why why did I do that? To be able to reuse it everywhere. With this thing, this interface and all the um, the plumbing for that is only in Orchard dot display management. It has nothing to do with content management at all. The idea being we can reuse it in many modules, which I did explicitly I wish. Um, so this thing and all the placement and shape support is in display management. You see, ultra display management. It doesn't know about content items at all. Uh, but this thing, the handler is, the handler which is actually here, the driver, the content part handler, is um, all about content management for the content items. So this is why I, I split uh, this one. So And I think it makes sense and for usability it's, it's good. So you could have a project which does theming and doesn't care at all about content management or content items. That's also a ultimate goal. And it was not that hard and we can reuse stuff, so that's good. Uh, it's done. Beautiful. Um, so this contained part display driver. Um, um, it, also what is interesting is that you can implement display drivers targeting anything, not just content part or content field. You still have that. But you can do a display driver that will display on any content item and then check what you want to do. In this case, I'm just checking a content item. Do you have the contained part? Uh, this one being like you are contained by something, probably. Okay, um, And then you can do something you want. So you don't, yeah. That's also more open, more flexible. Uh, otherwise, it's the same thing. You, you, you see that everything is async when it needs to be async. Um, and that's good. Okay, so this one is all. It's not important. What I wanted to show is... Where is my list part um, settings driver? Where did I put that? In the settings folder? Oh, there is a settings folder. Okay. So this is this one, list part settings folder. So this one, this settings display driver, inherits from content type part display driver. So this is where separating the handlers from the drivers is interesting because now the driver um, infrastructure can be reused to drive um, UI composability for other concepts than just content item. In this case, content definitions, like content type definitions, content part definitions, and so on. Um, so what I want to do with this driver is whenever a type, uh, whenever the par a part, list part, is attached to a type, and I'm editing this type, I want to show an editor to ask the contain type that has to be used for this list. Example, I edit blog, it has the list part, I need to be able to enter blog post as the content type that is owned. So we do then a settings display driver, which is inheriting from type part display driver. Type part display driver, because this will be only to render it for the parts attached to a type. Okay? It's like an orchard one. It was just hidden, this thing. And here, we will be called for every content type part. We have to check, is the current part we are editing for the current type is a list part? If it is, then we return a shape, like for content item drivers. Before, we had to return the name of an MVC template that had to be in the editor templates folder, and you could not even override define location. It was really... Uh, archaic. Uh, now it's based on shapes like the, the content item drivers. So here we say return a shape whose view model will be a list part settings, but the shape type is list part settings edit. So list part settings dot edit dot CSHTML. 
okay and when you need to render this shape if you need to render this shape because maybe placement will hide it or whatever you get the model which is a list bar settings and this model you will initialize it based on the settings of the current content type bar definition that we are hitting that we cast to a list bar settings and we assign the value to the to the view model that we are passing to the shape so here and and we say location content because same thing we have a, a, temp, um, a layout for the content definition which is mainly based on content but we might add other um, zones for editing the content definition we'll see that um, so here what is interesting is that it's based on shapes same thing for update and edit so well for this one is just edit and update there is no display actually it's just editing the content type definitions um, what is interesting is that it's shapes now so we can also override how they are designed in the admin but the second thing which is interesting is that now we can return the shape of a strongly type object uh, it was already there um, a few weeks ago but now it's completely different now when you say that you will actually have an instance of this thing so if I go and list part settings edit list part settings edit views here this one so this is my shape template which will get an actual list part settings okay as the model and this list part settings the object I get actually also implements I shape so I can access if I want the attributes the class the ID and everything the idea is that whenever you do that it will create or reuse a dynamic proxy of that which means it will create a subclass of this class which will also implement I shape and I positioned so you can have access to the attributes class ID and everything that a shape needs uh, and the shape metadata types and everything uh, alternates whatever you want um, so there will, it will create a, a, um, a subclass of that and pass it directly, uh, create the model. You can initialize the model with what you want and then you will get it in your view. So this is really strongly typed shape uh, view models. Um, and that works and it is still super fast. Uh, I can also show you questions. Please interrupt me if I... If you have questions feel free I will just go well this version should still work yep well, one, one question Sebastian the new uh, localization syntax with um, a bracket instead of a parenthesis what's yep. what's that about that's a speed rate core so in a speed rate core they created uh, services and interfaces for stuff that we had already in Orchard unsurprisingly because it was the same architect uh, like I localization uh, string um, like caching everything is already in SPI core but uh, they changed some little things so I tried to reuse for localization uh, where was it where did you find it in the razor view yep so um, so let's go back to the definition of this thing actually I have a better example because there is a something which is different let me show you here uh, content types controllers admin look at this one so in the constructor here I'm injecting HTML localizer for admin menu and I string localizer for admin menu these are two different things but both they have their implementation is an indexer okay so this is no more so we don't inject a delegate like in Orchard they inject an interface and the way to do that is get string or an, uh, an indexer this is how you get the string so this is not dot something it's just use the indexer and uh, does it still use PO files or is it possible it's, to use PO yes files? it's completely open they, they had that in mind uh, um, so the, the current implement the default implementation using uses res resx files but you, we can provide our custom implementation using PO files yeah, definitely I haven't done that yet it's just a null localizer but I'm using the code for uh, later uh, there are also two interfaces here which is important the HTML localizer and the string localizer the HTML localizer will return uh, an HTML string and the string localizer which will return string which will be encoded so based on the context where we are for instance in the views I only inject the HTML localizer because everything we render will be HTML but in the code based on the context you will want to resolve string HTML both 
so in this case, I have I need both because I have model state and model error, which just takes a string, not HTML. So this will be encoded, and now this is obvious that this string will be encoded. So if you put HTML, it will be encoded, so it will render as is, not as HTML. But some others, like notifier, because it's just used in the views, notifier is accepting only an HTML localized string. So something that will be rendered as is, uh, meaning which can contain HTML, it will be rendered also. The HTML in that thing will be rendered. So there shouldn't be any more double encoding issues because the contract is clear with the service what it needs. It needs something which is already encoded and will be rendered on HTML or something which is string and will have to be encoded. So don't put HTML inside. And what, what's the type parameter for? Like uh, localizer of something, what's that of? Um, the class. So it's probably like the source we have in uh, in Orchard. It's, they call it uh, the context. So in this case, this is the class. This way we can find the resources for this class. Oh, okay. So it's about resolving the translations. Yep. And in the case of a view, the context will have the view name, and I'm building it, so contextualize with the view context. Okay, so this way it will find the the, the resource file for this view explicitly. So the generic type parameter of the localizer doesn't change the interface of the... No, because they okay. both implement iHTML localizer or iString localizer. Mm. So okay. we, we can define it as, uh, which I did here, you see, I shim localizer, I string localizer. I so first I use it T everywhere and then I had the, the case where I needed two of them, so I didn't know what to do. I call it S here. This is the only place I have. I don't know how to call it. Uh, or maybe it should be H. Oh, I don't know. T is nice because it's translate, maybe it's T S. I, I have no idea what to use. So I use S. I'm I'm like, well, we'll talk about it during a meeting, take votes and ask Sipka to <laughs> Decide. Uh, we'll see. Um, so that's it. Let me see if I can run it. And, and you said this this thing runs on RC2 now. It's been on RC2 for since we shipped RC2. Wonderful. Um, and and because you are not there, so you just download it. You open VS Code and you can debug from VS Code. You can run run the Gulp pipeline from VS Code, build all the modules from VS Code. Chantieri and uh, Jasmine have worked on that, so it's integrated. So build failures. Identity could not be found. Okay, I will just commit my work and revert to the previous. And because I was so I'm currently working on uh, identity support for uh, so the experiment identity integration in Orchard. That's what I'm doing right now, but it doesn't compile yet. I'm not done. Um, so closing that, then switching branches. Nice to see that we switched to uh, the one true bracing style. By the way, sure. <laughs> Check out master. By the way, when are we going to switch that for Orchard One? <laughs> is it a, is it a embarrassing question? No, we don't want to do that. Do that and lose all traceability through version history. Yep. So loading this one. In the meantime, I will open not VS Code but PowerShell just to build the modules locally. Oh, it was already running. Crap. Um, so build um, so this is this is for the core modules uh, oh it doesn't like something Weird, maybe a bug. Okay, dot net build and for the modules.
the modules is, are important only because this is what is loaded by Orchard. Um, the, well, the, the binaries have to be in the, in the modules folders, but here all the core ones and it just to be Visual Studio in the Artifacts folder. So that should work. And yesterday I did some uh, perf test again and uh, on my machine uh, with SQL Server um, local. Oh, whatever. Yeah, there's something is wrong. Oh, the net restore. Okay. Okay. Crap. Which one did I break? Yeah, on my machine with my local SQL server, um, rendering a blog and a blog post. Blog was a little bit slower, but the blog post, which had a title, a body, and a field, was more than 700 requests per second without cache. Hey, I'm sorry, did you say without cache? Without. There is no cache at all right now. You lie. I will show you. And with really great um, TTL, like 20 max, something like that. Crazy. And if you do the calculation, let's say your website runs only for eight hours in a day and you are at 100 requests per second, not 700, 100 requests per second. You can hit 14 or 15 million requests per day if your site only runs on eight hours, but it will run more. So above 100 requests per second, you handle all the load you want, all the, yeah. <laughs> so, so we basically don't need the port output cache. We don't need output uh, cache. <laughs> well, there will be more modules and more things to display, but still, yeah. and. It will be even faster with um, output cache for sure. Um, so this is done now, so this should work. Sipke, I'm sure you are enjoying, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I am actually. Okay, so, so it's now. I will. I, I just want to show you the, the perf. It will. It won't be the actual perf, but uh, so to to show the actual perf, you do that. You do that. Uh, okay, you need to build in release. That's better. Okay, and then this one. That's weird. Oh, because I didn't change them since last time I built in release, so that's good. Then to run, you do .NET. So you could do .NET run, but if you do .NET run, it will build it. So you just do .NET. And you point to the um, to the DLL of the app. And the startup is much faster this way. For those who don't know, it started. So now I can go on this page, where it's already in my cache. So. This one. There is no thing answering the default home page. This is actually a 404. There is not just no error message, but you can see it's a 404. So I will go to the admin. It's longer because now it's loading the modules actually. Okay, it's done. So I'm in the admin here. Um, eight seconds for startup, which is good. It's better than Orchard one. You see, I hit F5, there is no cache. Well, the menu is cached, I think, in this case. 11 milliseconds reported by Chrome, okay? So this is kind of fast. I can go here to um, content types, just to see the settings in action. So here I created a blog, a blog post, who is the default one. 
the blog edit this is slow the first time it's compiling the views the edit you see I have the parts this is all based on shapes here and this shape has been injected in the type part I also have made just to be sure this is a settings editor for that that appears on all type parts so I made a, a settings display driver for that targets all type parts example do you want to index that okay everywhere same thing for the fields if you want um, you can add fields stereotypes this works already so this is all shapes everything you see here is just a bunch of shapes that are uh, composed using drivers and if we go to the content items I created a blog and three posts so this is when you click here you have the admin view and you click here you have the edit view okay these are different for blog for a blog post this thing the admin and the edit will go in the same thing okay it's just edit but for a blog it makes sense to have different because when I click on edit I want to edit the properties of my blog which is a title but when I click on this one I want to see the blog here and I can create a new blog post this is just a list editor it doesn't know about blog it's just the, well create new what a blog post because this is a content content types content type so here I have three three posts so I can create new blog post which has a title and a body I have two parts only today which is title and body and the simple ones so uh, fourth sorry fourth blog post um, body body Old, publish. Okay, your blog notifications work, and they don't use sessions; they use cookies. Beautiful. Um, then I can go there. Content items. I see my blog, fourth blog post. I can go view. Okay. Oh, the summary. I didn't. Oh, I, I didn't fix the summary. Actually, interesting. So F5, F12. F5 20 milliseconds remember I'm sharing with Skype so it takes uh, some uh, some time and now it run a, a, so I can go on, on the blog itself and you see it works title part body part um, content item display there is no ideas right now but that's progress and now if I go there Go bench one okay five concurrent users for 10 seconds keep alive and the URL will be this one I had 760 something yesterday but I will have much lower now oh 602 you see hit per seconds uh, so this one doesn't give you the the TTL it just takes less um, CPU so it's more for the web server and SQL and here I have both running at full speed so if I had SQL server on different uh, machine it would be much faster um, and if I go to Apache bench where we can see the um, TTL uh, Apache bin so this is actually almost the same thing 5 10 seconds K okay. there is nothing like this it didn't work last time I don't know why let's see you see so here we just have 300 requests per second because Apache Bench itself uses a lot of CPU so less for the web app which is sad this is why I'm using GoBench to get the number of requests per second and I'm using Apache Bench to get the TTL so 99% under 28 milliseconds no cache this is just rendering one account at a time but still it's it's one it's uh, there is database call to get the, the data the JSON document it has to find the parts to call the rendering for all the parts those parts are using um, uh, proxy generation for uh, static views strongly typed views so this is beautiful and it is still still fast and if I do that on the blog itself um, the query is it's, it's more complex because there is a join here to get all the so the query is actually not optimized because 
there is a join to get all the blog posts for a specific container, but we could index the list of blog posts. So with just one query on the blog, we will get, for instance, even the last page for the blog post. So we don't have to do a join to get all the blog posts. We could optimize the query for that. Um, so in this case, this is 17. Ah, much slower, much slower here, 6 to 8. Yeah, that's, these ones are bad. But yeah, 90% at 50 milliseconds. I should also try with GoBench, but still, it was good yesterday on my, on my, on, on my box. So, without sharing. And there is still improvement to do. Yet. It's fast. Um, yep. So that's it for stuff. Sipke, your turn. Hey guys, let me share my screen. If I want. Let me share you. Go. Okay, so um, update from my end on the work done by others on the admin theme, the new admin theme. Um, some of you probably already saw this dashboard. This hasn't changed as far as I know, <clears throat> but let's just go over uh, some of the screens and stop me anytime you have some questions or some remarks. Uh, there's still little things to do, but the majority of the screens, as far as I could tell, uh, are implemented, which is nice. Uh, but there's little things like these little icons here that somehow got broken. But that should be easy to fix. What we're looking at here is the manage content types screen, uh, being a list of content types. This breadcrumbs thing has yet to be implemented. Currently, it's hard coded. But that, this is nice, going to be a nice feature for sections that consist of multiple pages, of course. Uh, but everything works and, and it's very snappy. It feels very snappy, the, the, the UI. Uh, here we can create a new content type. We can list all of the parts. As you can see, we can jump straight to uh, those pages. So in the, the current admin theme, you, you would first go to content types and then click this tab. But now we have sub menus, same for this left toolbar. Uh, for example, queries, we can go straight to bindings. And it's all, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. There's maybe some alignment issues that we need to look into. Um, bulk actions, this is, I think this is much better being a drop down button here. And there's also a, a new piece of UI. If there's no items in a list, you, you see this uh, uh, empty items uh, graphics with a nice orchard background logo and a quick link to add a new item. Here we create a new taxonomy. This all works. This also works for the media screen. So this is, uh, well, there's there's a little bullet here that needs to go. Um, we can create folders. So I think this turned out pretty well. Um, same goes for this, this I don't like so much. This is the content list screen. Uh, these are the filters. That this looks a little bit, um, I don't know, jumbled or something. This needs to be improved. Uh, this is a new idea. I don't know who uh, came up with this, but it's the idea is that we have um, the buttons horizontally aligned instead of uh, in a in a right column. And I think it was supposed to. It's a in a meeting. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I thought I thought this was a, a priority plus menu, but it doesn't appear to be. But uh, but it's oh, it is actually. There you go. Yes, Gustavo did that. That's awesome. So it's responsive. That's a main feature. One of the main features of this new admin and UI, of course, it's all based on Bootstrap, including this menu here. This is all responsive, and this menu here. Uh, so that's. I think that's cool. 
um, the taxonomy is yes, widgets. Widgets, yeah, this, this uses the old UI, um, and because it's pretty, pretty um, specific to this feature, and there's still some things to do, as you can see. But, um, but yeah, it, it, at least it works. And most of the screens are pretty much dialed in. There's just some minor polishing left. I think also the module screen looks very good. There's a nice filter, of course. Tabs work. Users. Sorry about that. That was the wrong button. Okay, so this this requires some work still. Um, but yeah, uh, and, and actually this is the the new code base provided by um, the original the designer of the Amaretti theme. This is no longer the Amaretti theme. This is a, a subset, if you will. It's called Orchard, which is pretty cool. This is the Orchard admin theme. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. So, um, schedule, timelines. Oh, timelines. Uh, good question. So there's there's still some issues on um, GitHub, and I have some private notes that I need to transfer to GitHub. But uh, I think, depending on on people's availability and my own availability, I think uh, one more month or so. I think that's realistic. Okay. Still, we target in the Orchard 11, so... That, that's in cool. any case, yeah. Do we have a date for 111? No, when ready. Right, yeah. So, yeah, the goal is to have this part of 111 uh, uh, and also deployments. That I think that would make a, 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 a worthy new release. How about that's the layout editor, Sipkin? Does that work? Yeah, yeah, it works pretty well, actually. Let me show you. So, create a new page. For a change. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we have all the parts, and this is the, the layout editor, which looks the same. But well, it's, it, now it looks better because it's green like the theme. Yeah, it fits better. Yeah, <laughs> although it's not the exact same U, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it, looks, it looks a little bit better. So, at some point, we'll create, you will create a branch on the main repository. Uh, once it's yeah, and then there. I think it should we um, um, should we squash the entire thing? You can well, we, you can work with up to you, but yeah. When so we merge it, when the we merge it, is that people will lose their you know we will we won't we will no longer see who contributed. Uh, but on oh. the other hand, that uh, branch contains the full Amaretti code and the author would not, you know, yep, so, would yep. not appreciate that, so maybe of little choice. Yep, so you need to squash. Mm. Maybe we can put in some credits note or something. Well, whatever, we have the contributors list, which will be up to date. You don't, we just won't count, okay. count the, the lines committed, but we have the contributors list. Yeah, okay, that's good. And, and we know who did that, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Um, you, yeah, you will need to, at some point to be on the, on the main repository if you want more help from people to test and also fix issues because definitely. Because and I, I think actually we are in a, in a good shape to 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 do this today, uh, and then it will be visible, and then people will be able to make contributions uh -huh. uh, directly, and then of course people can submit pull requests. Right now, everyone needs to create pull requests unless you have access to my. This is part of my private repository. Uh, and so, yeah, so two yeah. reason why it, why it was on, on Zipka's repository uh, for the Amarity theme, and also because it will be too much noise on the main repository. So many commits that we will just see that 
and not the rest of the cities. But now I think it's more stable, and uh, there will be less commits, and we, sh we, we could go on a branch on Orchard. Yeah, exactly. All done? Yep. Yeah, I yeah, just uh, wanted to ask about the uh, upper right corner. Um, do these buttons also have features? And, and first of all, where, where is your avatar coming from? Yeah, this is going to stay. This is part of, this is part of the new logo. No, I'm kidding. This is uh, um, the idea is that this would take, use Gravatar, and if the currently logged in user has an email address provided, then we could use that to display the Gravatar. Uh, that's the idea. Um, these icons, ha they don't have any function at this point, um, so we are probably just going to hide it hide them for the time being until we find a proper use for them. Uh, same goes for this sliding in menu. Uh, this, this could it's maybe so contain some the, shortcuts. The or hmm? is very easy. Just remove everything but create a zone so that any module can add stuff there at the top and on the right. So just make it empty if we have any, nothing to say inside but create a zone at least in the layout so we can target them. That's an excellent suggestion because then we leave it empty and then third party modules can at least use it if they have something clever to show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will Same do it and uh, I will add the admin culture sector selector in this uh, zone on the upper uh, right. Uh, that would be a good example. We could also add yeah. some search, yeah, that's, search that's also. A good idea. Yes. Yes. The search module should be able to if we have an admin index to add the search box there and trigger the search. Actually, there's a yeah, yeah. So search from this green toolbar because there's also yeah. search here Where? at the bottom right. But maybe oh, I wonder I if this would Whoa. be a global search or a search within this pane. Never saw that, so don't worry. Just put it in the green bar, just to search for the content items at least. So. Yeah. Well, Let's make see, make yeah. make a zone. <laughs> it can change, and we can implement it. But yeah. Yep. Yep. There's nothing to do well, what about the, this gray section? Should this maybe should, this should also be zones, I suppose? But should there be, maybe be a default behavior at some point where you see them? Well, that, no, that doesn't well, make you, sense. You, you can I keep your name at the top. Yeah, it, it, same thing if it's a zone yeah, or can, a set of this, zones. This can stay. Yep. Well, um, using a graphitar. But I was wondering about these little things like recent same thing. Zone. blog posts. Zone for the toolbar and zone for the content. Right. Okay. And this way it will be empty at first, but people can do stuff for Orchard in general or for their own needs. Yeah. Yeah. Precise. Okay. Like maybe we'll have someday a module which will drive that and you can add your own custom links. As long as we have zones, it's any module can extend that. Yep. So, so could you, do you have a feeling for how much um, custom styling, custom CSS you had to add in addition to the Amaretti theme to get this to the state that it is now? Um, yeah. It, it was not, it was primarily uh, adapting. So, so we, we created a few uh, shims or one, there's one shim less file that um, that is that will be used by well modules use old CSS if you will CSS classes so we have some sort of adaptive layer um, but to transform all of these pages actually I can maybe it gives you an idea if we look at the number of less files um, so as you can see that we have, we just have a bunch of less files for various portions of the admin theme. Um, but in terms of percentage, it's hard to say, maybe maybe 10%? Antoine, okay. what do you think? Mm -hmm. Or just math, just math on the call, he did a lot of work. So those are those the less files that you're seeing there. They are less files for views that w for, for which you have adapted the markup for the new theme, but you had to do something in addition to that to to tweak it, if you will. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. Because there's, we we did change the views of the core modules, 
auto modules provided with the uh, sort uh, you know with the distribution um, but we didn't change all of the classes because the Amaretti theme didn't provide uh, you know uh, those classes that we needed or those constructs that we needed so um, yeah we had to do part of that and I, yeah I think 10 percent was it, it does it's not that bad in total but um, why the question? I was just curious as to how how much of the Amaretti theme that you you were able to leverage and how much you needed to add. To right. It. Yeah. Well, it's it's things like I don't know, like like this screen here. For, for the, this is all custom. He says there's nothing from the Amaretti theme here, uh, including these little guys. So prim mostly what we were able to use from the Amaretti theme is, of, of course, this, this, this menu system and this, this thing here, and, and things like panels and buttons and uh, other gen generic widgets. Mm. Uh, but also, for example, the media, there's, that doesn't come from Amaretti, uh, obviously. Right. Yeah. Mm. yeah so, but it's hard to say, really. Okay. Great. Thanks you. Thank you, Sipke. Um, good. Well, you create the branch by yourself. You know how to do that. You have access. Um, yep. What else? Questions? Any comments? Because before we close the meeting. Um, at some point, I'd like uh, some of you to start working on Orchard 2, create modules, ask questions, comment on the code and uh, criticize or say, hey, we need to do that in Orchard 2 before it's too late, things like this. Zoltan, feel free. Um, <laughs> before it's too late. Um, and you are so many at Lombig that you can provide at least two full-time employees to work on Orchard 2. Um, I was I all the time, the but, uh, <laughs> how, how many are you at Microsoft, Sebastian? Uh, well, I'm worth 10, so... <laughs> Sebastian divided by two. So. <laughs> um, but, by the way, regarding that, uh, when you look back into the version history of Orchard, you see these these names of people from, you know, when Orchard was the primordial ooze of Orchard, the days of yore, and they seem, they, they all seem to be geniuses, basically. What happened to them? They, 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 they were are. Microsoft people who yes, worked on are. Orchard, but they, they're no longer? I've talked about it many times. The, um, when Scott Goodery became important and uh, became the lead of Azure, they start, it was in 2011, um, they started working on the Azure portal, the previous one, you know, the blue one before the one today. They started working on that and they needed lots of people, so half of the team went on this project and also on Azure SDK, like um, Andre, Luis, and Renault went on the Azure SDK, which you are using today, but they don't, don't work anymore on that, but they started it. Um, um, Nathan and uh, David worked on the Azure portal, uh, what else? Uh, Suwa went on the um, security team, so yeah, they they moved to work on Azure because it was a priority. Are they Orchard still in, Azure, in Azure? Azure? No, no. Since then, some of them have left Microsoft. Um, some of them work on. So Louis, for instance, was the architect for Azure, became the architect of ASP.NET Core, and this is why there are some. Um, um, similarities, um, and now he's working at on Bing, I think. Um, Nathan left a few years after that in some startups in Seattle, he moved around. Dave Reed works at uh, Blizzard uh, because he wanted to, because he was working from home actually from uh, California, now he works at Blizzard in um, Irvine. Irvine, something like that, um, and and was so I still working at Microsoft. Bertrand left and came back, still working at Microsoft. Um, Renault works at Google. Hey, some people moved. Hmm. Andre works or still at Microsoft, and now he's in the um, Azure Mobile something. I don't know the name. Yeah. Is there any interest? Is there any interest within Microsoft to maybe recommitting more resources to Orchard than? Just you in the future? I should be already happy that I can work on Orchard. Imagine how many projects like this Microsoft contributes, like not that many, so that, that's good, I think. 
Mm. Uh, I'm asking sometimes, but if, yeah, as long as we have customers who deal a lot with it and create a huge business with that, yeah, they, they might be, but so far, priority right now is ASP.NET. That's why I'm also adding, uh, helping on ASP.NET. The priority is ASP.NET.NET Core. So, mm. and, and because of that, there can't be more resources on Orchard because we will have to take it from someone somewhere else. And they are like, no, no, if we have some people available, they would work on ASP.NET and .NET Core. Don't worry. So that's the issue. Priorities. Maybe after when it's slowing down in ASP.NET Core and we'll see. But yeah. If Orchard 2 is awesome and we do great websites with that, why not? I don't know. But so far, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking because Orchard is so far along in adopting uh, ASP.NET Core, it might be a valuable showcase well, for Microsoft. Well, that's part of why I'm still working on that and working on Orchard too, because it's not only a showcase, but it's also validating the the system. We, I, I say it every time. If Orchard works on ASP.NET Core, everything works on ASP.NET Core. Mm. There are so many com complex things in Orchard, and we are pushing the the, the, the system and testing every piece of, of ASP.NET. So I've, I found many bugs in ASP.NET because of Orchard, trying to port some stuff, trying to make it work. And so that's a good, that's what we call application building, just to be sure that we can build something with uh, ASP.NET. It's Orchard. And uh, yeah. And so far, it's one of the only CMSs that has been migrated to .NET Core, or is currently being migrated to .NET Core. So that's also important for, for the team to have something testing the, the system. We see after RTM. Hmm. Other questions? Good. Okay, then see you on Thursday for the triage.